I was raised, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, in a super dysfunctional family. A matriarchal, no fathers there, no men around at all. All I had was a great grandmother that told me the King James Bible is the word of God and don't let nobody take it away from you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse one, it says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. My name is Anthony Rudolph and my Israel is black America. God's called me to plant a Bible believing church in the heart of black America. And here's where it started. As a young kid, I was raised, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, in a super dysfunctional family. A matriarchal, no fathers there, no men around at all. All I had was a great grandmother that told me the King James Bible is the word of God and don't let nobody take it away from you. So as a little kid, I just believed my great grandmother that she was telling me the truth. But in the midst of that, with no structure, with no rules that are concrete, with no man in place to, to uh, put the law down, our family was in a whirlwind of despair and destruction and havoc. And in the middle of that, all I had was a Bible. And all I knew is I could come to my Bible and I could read my Bible and God was there and I would be in like a balloon or a cocoon or just hovering in the middle of that thing and I would have peace and joy. And I never understood it until one day I go to this Baptist church named Shiloh Baptist in Detroit and I get saved. I realized that I was a sinner and somebody preached to me salvation and it preached hell hot to me. And I knew one thing for sure, I had no desire to go to hell and I got saved. But after I got saved, I'm back in this whirlwind of destruction and chaos and despair at home. But I got a Bible and I read in my Bible. Fast forward, my mom is an alcoholic Everybody in my family is on drugs. My mom goes to rehab and I go to live with my cousins. And when my cousin's mom starts using crack and gets out of control, it's just us kids. And at 14, 15 years old, I'm in the street selling drugs. And I'm getting all A's in school. And I got all these guys from my neighborhood following me. Eventually, we, they follow me to Lima, Ohio, selling drugs. And in this case, I have like 30 some guys following me to sell drugs to Lima, Ohio. I'm saved, the Holy Spirit is grinding me to powder, and I am miserable. I have no peace, no joy, but I got money, power, respect, and all those things that you think you're supposed to have. But meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is on the inside, ripping me apart. And one day I say, God, could you, could you rescue me from this lifestyle? Could you save me? Could you get me away from this stuff? Help me to stop selling drugs because I know this is not what you called me to do. And so I landed up in the jail cell. And when I get to jail, when the police put the handcuffs on me, I say, thank God. And it was just like a relief, it just like a burden had lifted up off my back. And I was relieved. And I went to jail and I picked my Bible up. And I began to question everything I knew. And then I said, God, you need to send somebody to me that loves your book. 
because there's a lot of people in here preaching the Bible, using the Bible, and they're all preaching different things. And all I wanted to know was the truth. I knew God was real. I knew I was saved. I just knew that something was wrong and how I was doing this thing and how I was approaching it. And I wanted the truth. And so God sent four people from Hope Baptist Church and they kept saying, don't believe me, believe the book. And I was excited and I said, man, these are the guys, God. I prayed, God, send somebody to me that loves your book. And he sent four people from Hope Baptist Church with the Bible. And I says, uh, these are the guys, God. I said, I like these guys. And then I start praying, God, I need one of these guys to disciple me. I don't know where I got the idea for discipleship from. I just pray, God, I need one of these guys to disciple me. And then Ken Lease comes in probably three days later, two days later, with some discipleship books, with two of them and said, who's interested in being a disciple? And I says, praise the Lord, God, that's me. So not only did God send somebody to me that loves his book, then he sends them to, the, to me to disciple me. So these first two prayers I prayed and God answered them immediately. And so he comes, Ken comes two and three times a week, sometimes two and three hours at a time, being a blessing to me. He came on Thanksgiving, he came on Christmas, just being a blessing to me. And I had nothing in common with this white guy. Nothing in common with this black guy from the hood in Detroit. The only thing we had in common was Jesus Christ. And eventually, as he's discipling me and teaching me the Bible and helping me grow in grace and knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ, he tells me about this Bible Institute. Being that I should have been the first person in my family to graduate from college, I said, God, could you work it out that I only get five years? Now, I should have been in jail for the rest of my life. I should still be in jail. I should never get out of jail. But I prayed and asked God, could you work it out that I, you only give me five years? so I can get out and go to that Bible Institute because I'm supposed to be the first person that graduate from college in my family. Well, God grants the prayer. God lets the judge say, judge says, I don't know why I'm giving you this time. I really want to give you a less. I want to try. I can't figure out how to give you less, but I'm going to give you five years. The judge gives me five years, just like I pray. And while I was in jail, I stopped reading the newspaper, I stopped watching TV, I just read my Bible and studied, and every piece of literature I can get, I devoured it, and tried every Bible study I could get, I devoured it to try to make sure that I was worshiping God in truth and in spirit. And then upon getting out, and after I get the five years, and while I was in jail, I also prayed God give me a wife, and he sent me a wife. I didn't pick her, I didn't look for her, God sent me a wife. I also prayed, let my wife be sitting here while I'm in jail. She started praying the same time, same year probably. The same year for sure, but the same month probably. And God gave me a wife. I also prayed, God, don't let my mom or my grandmother die before I get out and graduate from Bible Institute. My grandmother dies three weeks later, and my mom, my mom dies after I go to Lima and start this church. Well, I get out. I go to the Bible Institute. I graduate from the Bible Institute. I get married. And after I get married, God's been dealing with me all this time. Before I got married, God was dealing with me about going back to Lima and starting a church. And this is how he did it. Some of those same guys that I brought down to Lima to sell drugs with me were still out. Some of those same guys that I led into sin and depravity were still there. And so I began to witness to them and I began to talk to them and they began to get saved and they began to uh, start discipleship. I started discipleship with them. And then when I couldn't go no more and it wasn't working anymore, I said, you need to go to a Bible believing church. And they says to me, Man, all the Bible believing church, anything close to a Bible believing church is all white. And I would always say so. And they would laugh at me and say, dude, you crazy. You can go to an all white church and not be, be a problem. But we don't feel comfortable there. You need to come back and start a church. Little do they know, God is already dealing with my heart about coming to Lima and starting a church. So eventually, I get the Lima to start the church. 
and this is where we at right now. God called me to black America. I've always been wondering, I often wonder, God, what's wrong with my people? And why are my people so far behind? And I submit to you, it's this book. The Bible says faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They need a preacher. How can they hear unless a preacher preach?